are in Langley in British Columbia, close to Vancouver. This is where Gordon Blankstein has taken up a rather ambitious challenge. On the farm he has transformed into a veritable Noah's Ark, this wildlife enthusiast is on a mission to save rare animal species threatened with extinction. Animals can have feelings, and animals can think, and animals can have passion. So I learned to respect them, and I learned that they could understand you, that, you, you know, when you did talk to them, they really, they learn their names. They understand what you're saying to them. They trust you. And so they, they, they taught me that, and they, they taught me uh, the love and the, and the passion required to want to do what I'm doing with my life. From a young age, Gordon Blankstein has been treating orphaned animals before releasing them back into the wild. Today, on his farm, this philanthropist keeps about 50 animal species, among them the rarest in the world, so that one day they can be returned to their country of origin. Gordon is helped by zoological gardens from all over the world, which send him their precious residence. One species in critical danger of extinction is the Adax, which he first took on his farm in 1987. Only a hundred or so remain in the wild, in small groups scattered around northern Africa. At first, Gordon wondered whether these animals from a hot climate could stand up to a Canadian winter. He is now especially concerned about their possible return to their country. We started to breed these animals and we've been looking for places that we could send them. I mean, that's the whole objective. And with a lot of these endangered animals, the countries are not in a position to accept them back. And to make a successful project, it takes the community buying in, it takes the government buying in. And it takes time to organize that. And it takes organizations with money to do some of these things. One of Gordon's favorite species is the Malaysian tapir. This animal lives in Southeast Asia, mainly in tropical rainforests and swamps. Want me to go and visit yet? I'll go over there. It is threatened by human activities such as logging and hunting. Good girl. Come on. When are you going to have your baby, sweetie? Uh, come on, Mama. Gordon is concerned about the state of health of his protege, who is expecting a baby any day now. As tapers are hard to breed in captivity, Gordon is apprehensive. You are a big baby. Yes, you are. That means you can have your baby pretty soon. Yes, it is. It's nice and warm. Is he moving? Can you feel him? Yeah. Oh, I know. I can feel it. Oh, it's so fun. Not so much fun. No. Whether omnivore, herbivore, or carnivore, each animal receives treatment appropriate to its condition and position within the food chain. The hardest species to release is a predator. They have to learn how to hunt and kill. It's a lot more difficult to let them go than it is a Vancouver Island marmot or a frog. Uh, when we go to let the wild dogs go, they have to be able to hunt large game. So the more complex and the more intelligent and the more pack size within the species, the harder it is. Releasing animals into the wild can be a complex business. Such is the case with the Lycaon, the wild dog from Southern Africa that lives in well-organized packs of some 35 animals. This predator is one of Africa's rarest and hunts in packs over vast areas of up to 800 square kilometers.
Often, the animal's lifestyle habits make the work very painstaking. Such is the case with the Vancouver Island Marmot, a few specimens of which are living at this farm. This species of marmot is threatened with extinction. In 2002, a census revealed only about 20 individuals scattered around their natural territory. There was many factors that probably contributed to the population decline. So one aspect was clear cutting. Clear cuts attracted marmots that were dispersing and then they stayed in those areas which were actually more dangerous because predators could find them more easily. Other aspects is when the population is already as small as it is, when individuals disperse they might not find another marmot and then there's no one for them to breed with and keep up the population. The only way to save this rare species is to capture a few specimens and raise them in captivity before later releasing them back into the wild. For Gordon and his team, the project to re-establish the Vancouver marmot is a massive challenge. The rarity of the species makes every marmot even more precious. Several questions need to be answered. How do marmots react to captivity? Will they reproduce easily? Questions that, for now, remain unanswered. Over the years, the Adax has been successfully bred. The animals seem to have adapted very well. So much so that today, Gordon Blankstein has two distinct herds. These guys are our captive genetic material that we breed to raise the youngsters to, to grow our numbers. We have another herd of Adax that is much wilder than this group, but it's being prepared to go back to the wild. Soon, this herd of Adax, raised in an isolated enclosure, will leave for Africa. This eagerly anticipated moment is the culmination of all the Mountain View team's efforts. But uncertainties remain. In Africa, preparations must be made for the arrival of the Adax. Gordon wonders how animals born and raised in Canada are going to react to the arid climate of the African deserts. Hey, Jacka. Every day, Renee Bumpus does her rounds to check on the health of the animals and give them any attention they need for their development and well-being. It's the kind of expertise that Gordon Blankstein is keen to share with other communities around the world. He wants his knowledge to help save as many animals as possible, which is why he increasingly works in partnership with people in the countries the endangered species come from. Hello, Jonah. Hi. How are you? Hi. Jonah Ratsimbazafi is a biologist in Madagascar. He is working with Gordon on a project to release lemurs on his island in the Indian Ocean. When Mr. Gordon was in Madagascar, we talked about the conservation of threatened species, particularly lemurs, because these animals really are an endangered species. Without the forest, they cannot survive. Driven by poverty, people want to grow crops, and every year they slash and burn, destroying forests, so that right now this species is on the verge of dying out. The red lemur is a critically endangered species. 
It lives with its family in groups of five or six individuals, and every litter produces twins. Over 90 species of lemur can be found on Madagascar. The island's isolation has always favored their protection, but that's no longer the case. Rapid deforestation is endangering this vulnerable species. Jonah's project is based on conservation and the development of a green economy. But can this bold venture become a success? There are many pitfalls, and the plan is a long-term one. We can help people by saving lemurs and preserving biodiversity. We can create alternatives, try to reduce direct dependency on the environment, on natural resources, on woodland resources. It's definitely possible to have development without destroying the forest. Well, we have a few more years of work to do. We're doing really well. The, the marmots are really well able to breed in captivity. So our captive population is doing really well. And so now it's just a matter of building the wild population so that we can have a self-sustaining population in the wild. More than 60 Vancouver Island marmots have been released into 10 specially protected sites. Gordon and his team are very anxious. How will the marmots react to their natural habitat? Will they be able to survive the extreme conditions up in the mountains? Only time will tell. Through the years, the projects undertaken by Gordon Blankstein have changed his view of his work. He understands that the success of a species reintroduction depends on the involvement of the resident community where the animals come from. We want to make sure that there's support behind the project. We don't want to be trying to save uh, animal A if everybody else wants that animal exterminated. I mean, that, it's, it's just not going to work. So we want to make sure there's government support in whatever country it is, whether it be Canada or abroad. And if all those things check, we jump in with both feet. Such was the case with the herd of Adex sent back to Africa. Transport permits, a great deal of red tape, cultural differences, thousands of kilometers of travel, so many hurdles had to be overcome. But happily, their efforts were rewarded. A locally run conservation park has been specially set up for the herd. Right now, the herd of Adax is in a transitional habitat and will soon be released. The area seems rather deserted. The new colonies may not have survived the harsh winter that grips the mountains of Vancouver Island. Before releasing them into the wild, the team fitted subcutaneous transmitters to each marmot so they could more easily be tracked. We can tell whether they're alive or dead based on their body temperature. Uh, if they've died, they're trying to determine was it predation, was it uh, some other cause. If it was predation, was it a wolf, was it a cougar, was it an eagle? No sign of marmot life. The team is starting to get worried. There's nothing to indicate that the marmots are still in the vicinity. Where are they? This silence does not bode well. Dawn seems to have seen something. 
straight ahead of you. Just on the edge of the green, you look to the far green. The little rock's right at the base. There's a marmot sitting on it. It is a relief. They have finally spotted one of their protégés sitting on a rock. Not only is the marmot apparently in good shape, they have also spotted some pups born in the spring. It's a real team effort, but uh, the survivorship is working. If you were born in the wild as a marmot pup, you have less than a 60% chance of surviving the first year. We're doing that well with released marmots. So that's pretty cool. I mean, if they mirror what is actually happening in the wild, then we're doing a good job. That's the whistle right there. That's the alarm call. One of the first things we started to see when there was low numbers was no alarm calls. Now when we see this population getting bigger, that's exactly what should happen. They warn each other that there's a predator coming, more eyes on the landscape, more ability to get underground before they get caught by an eagle. We probably got 150 or 60 marmots back in the wild. We're trying to get the population up to three or 400 in the wild. So it's gonna take some time to get there. But I would say today that, that the project is a success, that we will be able to save the Vancouver Island marmot, and that it will be in the wild on Vancouver Island. Since embarking upon this life project, Gordon Blankstein has become even more aware of the urgent need to act. If nothing is done over the next 15 years, one animal species in four will disappear from the planet. Oftentimes through animals, it's easier for people to see change happening. I can go in and I can give some money to save a child who's starving that greatly affects that child's life, no question. But it doesn't change the system in their country and it doesn't better the country's lives. But if we can send their animals back and we can teach these people that ecotourism and that the West will give in different ways than just militarily, I think we can make a better change in their life. And that's part of what Mountain View is about as well. So it's animals affecting change for people. I don't want to live in a world where there's just people. I want to live in a world where there's a bunch of God's creatures as well. If we can help them do that, I think we can help their lot in life, and I think we can make it a better planet.